Well, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Kelly Descender from Murrumbidgee Council and this afternoon we'll be you know, talking about digital marketing. Um, just like to welcome everyone um, along to the session and would like to announce that this session is proudly sponsored by the New South Wales Government. And now I'd like to hand over to Sandra Cowley from Candid Marketing who will take you through the session. Thank you. Sorry, I've just pressed the wrong thing. Okay. Hi everyone, good morning. Hi. Hi. No? <laughs> now can you hear me fine? I'm not there's no one on the chat up yet, so um people online haven't joined yet. Um so I'm Cassandra and I own Candid Marketing in Griffith, so it's a digital marketing agency. Um, we're a small team and we are, you know, all working in the space with websites and ads and Facebook and social media. So thank you to New South Wales Business, New South, no, Small Business Fund, and to Kelly from Mind Bridge Council for organising us today. Uh, so our number, our third presentation for today is Digital Marketing 101. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. What has happened there? Um, so what was your name that's joined us? Gayla. Gayla, and which business were you from? Ah, oh, yeah. I just went and read the Ned Kelly sign and I looked over, I thought the name was quite cute. <laughs> Okay, so Digital Marketing 101, how small businesses can quickly get ahead. Um, so we've talked about lots of different things today. Um, so there's a combination of, I'm just starting to turn. So we've got what's in the digital marketing landscape. There's social media, there's paid search, there's SEO, search engine optimization, there's content marketing, email marketing, and marketing automation. And you know, there's also websites in there as well, which is encompassing. How many of you are familiar with marketing automation? Oh. Content marketing? Oh, come on, guys. We talked about content marketing before. Oh. <laughs> Order. A little bit. What about the term SEO? Have you heard of it before? No. Okay, so, all right, that's all right. Well, we're going to blitz through these um, in this afternoon session. And so when it comes to marketing, digital, online or offline, it's really important to first set your objective. Um, I found this graphic online and I thought it was quite funny for those who can't read it. So there's the, the boss sitting at the boardroom table talking to a staff member and he's like, what's the big campaign idea? And he goes, we're going digital, we're going Facebook, YouTube, a mobile app, Pinterest. And the boss goes, what are we going to do in all those channels? And the guy goes, I don't know, we'll figure it out later. It's not much of an objective there. Um, so why is it important to set one first and provide structure to your marketing plan? What are you doing when and why? You establish effective goals for your campaign. It determines which tactics to use and enables you to measure the success of your paid, owned and earned digital marketing. How to set, the smart, how to set marketing objectives. Make them smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. Um, I still remember learning that acronym when I did business in Year 12 business studies. So I'm sure you've probably come along at somewhere in the journey when you had to write a business plan once before. Um, but you know, the same principles still apply. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. 
An example of a smart objective is this template. Um, and so I'm going to flick to the next slide so you can apply it in your business. Our objective, this border, is to drive sales and revenue from our SKUs of pies and bread, for example. Here's a better example. Our objective this month is to drive sales of garden furniture from 5 to 10% of total sales. So creating an objective for your business before you start doing a campaign is priority number one. You know, if you, if you want to sell four cars, you don't advertise motorbikes. Yeah. This is what we call a marketing funnel. So um, this is definitely the latest set of jargon that's coming out of the marketing world. Um, and when you look at it, it actually is quite practical. So at the beginning, at the top of the funnel, you've got awareness, um, and that's your tactics to reach your audience. So planning on content, um, you know, if you're still doing traditional radio and TV, it's creating awareness. The consideration phase is when your audience, audience takes notices of your product, product or service. So they might be engaging or calling or coming into the short shop and asking a question. The conversion is your tactics to result in a sale. Um, hi Cassandra, I'd like you to, I found you online. Um, I want to talk to you more about building websites. Yeah, okay, cool. So you get them in. You find out what they need. All right, so this is what we do. This is what you need. Do you want to go ahead or not? And then they'll say yes or no. Loyalty, and it comes from the effect uh, as a result of repeat sales and also doing a good job. So I went to the bakery for lunch. You know, you have lots of people in there. Everyone knows each other by their first name. You got that repeat sale. You've got that loyalty. They come back and they, they go advocate for it. So, you know, I came back and said I had the chicken pie. And then Kelly said, which one did you have? Like the two. Oh. So that is it, that is a very live, just happened example of loyalty and advocacy. Good objectives target the steps along the cu customer journey. All right, there's a lot of different graphics in there. So hands up if you know Facebook. You recognize Instagram? You recognize LinkedIn? What about Snapchat? Cool. That's the yellow one? Yep, yeah, that's the yellow one. Uh, email, which is pretty obvious. Uh, then there's a webinar one with the man on the dictating and the course. There's some calendars and some food ones in there. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of different channels out there. I have a slide from a presentation I gave a few years ago and it pretty much filled the whole page with icons and none of them were repeated. These are all different types of customer touch points. Um, you don't have to do all of them, but just be conscious of what they all are. Make your website's also one as well. All right, so websites. Websites, why are they important? What do you guys think? Why do you need a website? It's somewhere where you can hold a lot of information if people need to know anything at any time of the day, at least it's there. Yeah, exactly. So you could almost say your website is a digital receptionist. Yeah. Yeah. Opening, closing hours, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah. What does it do while you're asleep? You receive some messages and things. Which is business, yeah. Mm -hmm. The ultimate goal when you have a business is to make money while you sleep. So if you don't have a website, how are you taking customer information or sales online if you don't have a website or you don't have the facilities to do that? Food for thought. Websites allow you to uh, control the narrative of the conversation. So if someone comes to you, I actually used this as an example a couple of, about a month or maybe three months ago. Um, I needed to get some fly screens and windows done in my house. I could not find a supplier in Griffith online to find a phone number. I physically had to get in the car and drive there and went looking for it where I thought it roughly was. I had a really negative experience of trying to use to spend my own money because I could not find anyone. So, you know, the statistics are if you have a bad um, customer experience, you tell seven people and seven people tell seven people and it happens on a cycle of three or four, I'm pretty sure. 
So, you know, they still don't have a website. Um, I didn't spend the money with them because I was like, this is terrible. Um, but it just goes to the, you know, show the point, like, you know, if you, you're available online, you're there and you're ready for business and you want the work, be online, be, be found. Um, yeah, that was just another example. Um, maximize, maximize your return on investment. So optimizing your website, you know, put you in front of thousands of customers for a lot less money than you think. You know, in that in the scenario with the window company, it would have been cheap. They would have probably I wouldn't have been the only one because once I started talking about it to a few other people, they all were like, "Oh yeah, no, we've got someone from Wagga or Leeton to come because you know they don't answer their phone." Um, if you've got a website online and you're able to be found, that's half that's half the problem, and that's going to be cheaper than doing wages. We've all done payroll, <laughs> yeah. You know, two two weeks at forty hours, you pay for a website. Now you got a receptionist. Um, they allow you to expand your working working hours. Like I said, when you sleep, if you're taking inquiries or sales or bookings, um, and they allow you to compete with your competitors online. Uh, so over sixty three thousand Google searches Google searches are made per second, and the, there's a good chance that someone is looking for your product or service online. And if you're not there, how are you going to put your, your hat in the ring and compete? What are some characteristics that you all think make a good website? Pictures. Good content. Mm -hmm. The ability to navigate it. Very true. On desktop and mobile, very important. Yeah, and they said, you know what, they're all really good examples. Another one is a security certificate. Um, if you don't have a security certificate on your website, uh, you get flagged by Google. So whoever built your website for you, they should have had, they should put it on there, especially if you take credit card details or contact details. Yeah, you just get a red flag, which is not ideal. <laughs> you can get... Popping up, not secure. Oh, really? <laughs> just, just, uh, oh, we oh, don't. just jump on everyone. <laughs> we're on this we don't have payments or anything. Yeah, but I was just saying, you, still have, you should still have a security certificate because you just get it, it doesn't cost very much, but you just get red flagged by Google by not being a secure website. So someone could hack it and take information. Oh. Uh, I haven't got a red flag. You don't have a, it'll come up with a red cross or a block or something like that. And some people's web browsers won't show an unsecure websites. Or they'll put a sign up something like this. Website is not secure. Go back. Yeah. Don't know if any of you watch Monty Python, but it's like run away, something like that. <laughs> All right. Here's a little short video I made about our website. Oh. Oh, sorry. Press the wrong button.
What you need. What you need. What you need. Um, so here are examples of two webs two websites um, that aren't optimized amongst other things, and two examples of poor websites actually. Just wait for that thing to disappear. Do you want to tell me why these two websites when that thing goes away? Oh, I haven't done that before. Has. Oh, has? Not today. Okay. Well, do you want to tell me what these two, why these two websites might not be very good? Too much information? Too much the same colour. Nothing stands out. The picture really doesn't stand out either. So definitely not user friendly. No. It's a bit cluttered. It's hard to read. Yep. I can tell you just by looking at them that they were built in late to or mid 2000s just because of the way the structure design so then definitely not optimized for mobile um some of them had like you do you remember those little pictures that move and spin around and stuff like that of course do you remember when you looked at websites that did that anyway so these are really content heavy websites that aren't optimized for the user experience um and hard to read so all those reasons you said as to why they're not very good websites it's actually a um, statistical fact, or for, especially for design, light converts. So when you're designing a website, make sure you've got like lots of easy to read content, but on a white background, in particular for e-commerce. Okay, does anyone know what a Google My Business is? Or Google Places? Oh, something. I've seen it. I know that. So after today, I'd like you all to go and set up a Google My Business account. It's free. And you know when you've gone online, and especially on Google, and you've Googled um, curtains jewellery, and the search results come up, and usually there's a blue text heading, and then there's a black, and then on the right-hand panel, there's usually a business will pop up on the right-hand side. That little square that pops up on the right hand side is called a Google My Business listing. It's free to set up. You put all your information in it. You register, you need a Gmail account to do it. You put the name of the business, the telephone number, the operating hours, address, and a logo, and maybe a handful of photos. And then once you have put your business in there, you are automatically synced into all of Google search algorithms and you're optimized for being online. So even if you don't have a website, do that. Even if you don't use your social media channels yet, just go home and do that because that means you're linked into Google Maps. So if someone's looking for directions, they'll find you. They will, you will appear in Google search results and you'll be prioritized over other businesses in your industry or field that do not have a Google My Business set up. Um, it's a quite like it's you know it's a filling in the form process. So what happens after about a fortnight? They send you a postcard in the mail with a verification code to the registered business address to that make sure it's a real business. I think I've done. Excellent. And, you're not doing that. and that's where they can review and. Yeah, they send reviews and, and yeah, um, it is like a free boost up on the internet. Everyone should do it. I did all that, but lately in the last few months, I kept getting emails and phone calls from Indians mm -hmm. telling me that I um, that I no longer have that access on Google, or I don't, they're trying to get me to connect to something. And oh, it sounds like they're selling you something. Yeah. You know, if you're ever good. unsure, ask someone who works in IT or maybe a, just different. Yeah. <laughs> um, they they usually always trying to sell. Something. That is a completely free tool for everyone who has a business online. Yeah. Okay. You do not need to pay a cent for anything. No. Just set it up. Um, maybe they're trying to sell you into something else. I feel like I get calls all the time from different yeah. other <coughs> And lately it's all been about Google. But yeah, it could be the hot here. Yeah, you can do it, it doesn't cost you anything except for yeah. two hours of your time. Uh, I've done it, it's still there, but I don't know what they're trying to link me up to. And you know, it wouldn't hurt if you do start, well, I hope that you go and actively go on social media, literally copy and paste a post from Facebook and put it on your Google My Business listings. 
going to show you an example. Um, so this is for a company that didn't have Google My Business listing this year. I set it up for them, I don't know, Australia Day weekend. So that was how many people saw it in February. And then in July, they had a huge spike. And that was just by having that, that business listed on that right hand panel. So they click on call and it just automatically syncs into the your landline or your phone number connected. They didn't run any ads, they didn't even have a new website. I just did this for a family friend's business and that was a spike we saw straight away. And Google actually sends you an email once a week to say X amount of people clicked on your website link, X amount of people looked for you on Google. Oh, got that. Tips and tricks. Okay, so search engine optimization. So this one is very techy. I pre-warn you. Um, and it's it's what makes your website or your business found online more enhanced than others. Um, it is another video because when I prepped all these videos, I had all my best notes written on the whiteboard next to me, so I make sure I didn't miss a step. <laughs> um, oh, Linda Lane, was she meant to join us today? Mm -hmm. I just got an email for someone who missed out.
got no sign into it. Starting the count on that yeah, website. Discount. No, no, no. Oh. Starting the count. You buy something when I've bought something, and it's come back when it's because when you put your all your stuff in to start the account, and a lot of times they ask for your birthday and whatever like that, and your email address, you, that comes back. They come send you emails after that saying we'll give you 20% off and all that sort of thing. So that's the same sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's automation. So they're getting their the emails, yeah, it's helping that company by doing It encourages that. repeat visitation. So I used to look after it as the, the second largest pub company in the UK. I had a million people in their database and my job was to re-engage them to come back into their pub venue. So across their whole estate, there are like 260 pubs in London. Um, so I managed the central list and then had to do training with the individual pubs, similar to this, on how to do email marketing. And it's all about automation. So they would offer a, um, depends on the calibre of the pub, they would offer a, a schooner on them or um, if it was a, a lot of times if they were the more posh, more posh pubs, they would have a bottle of bubbles kind of thing and that's how they used to get people to come back in and then they would do stuff like pina colada day because they looked up the calendar of events actually i looked up the calendar of all the crazy holidays and stuff like that so they had like a, a whiskey night once a year and you know those types of things to drive people back in um in regards to maybe um with your business you could be like hey, it's spring have you serviced your tires or if, you know it's fishing where's the the bait and tackle like yeah, you know. Yeah, new season things like that. Christmas puddings at the bakery, um, wedding seasons for the Bombonieri, accommodation, you know, the well, the when the border opens, come and stay by the river, or cozy warm nights, or Ned Kelly anniversary, or you know, doing it in that so way. If I, if I want to put my line on sh my shop online and open and get them to open an account with do it that way. They don't even need to open an account. So once they purchase something, you can you can attract them two ways. One is to encourage them to sign up to the mailing list for say 10% or 20% off their first purchase. They'll sign up, they'll be added, they'll use that discount code and then they'll stay in the system. Pardon me, until they opt out. So or they opt in by buying something and then they're in the system. Yep. Okay. You can apply it to all businesses. Um, the the pubs we used to like, like the pubs I used to manage were pubs, and some of them had accommodation. So like, you, and I've the agency I worked with downstairs, they used to look after um, restaurants. So, and another team worked on e-commerce. So it's, it applies to all. Yeah. Um, okay, so a simple email gen. Oh, that didn't load. Oh, my internet must have cut out. Anyway, there was a picture here which you'll get in the presentation when you get it emailed to you, but it essentially was um, customer in, cart, welcome email. Um, you could also do a review email if they stay or they buy something for you to follow up in that transactional process. Um, if you've got a database of emails and stuff that you've already got but you don't use, I would recommend um, on your next round of invoices or next round of something, soon you'll be with creating a new database, click here to be opted in or let us know if you don't want to be put in it and we'll unsubscribe you and just put everyone across. You do need to ask, let give them the option for permission though. Another way, like when we send invoices out, there's a section on the invoice that has like notes something and that you could just put upcoming next month's yeah you know um a special deal on something or whatever and just send it on their account I suppose. yeah exactly but you want to try it's you don't want to link your um your special offers into the bill system it needs to be piggybacked in and like a more positive light so <laughs> yeah um Analyze and optimize. So, you know, this is for, you know, once you've got a bit of data cranking, so on your website, on your paid ads, or social, or email marketing, looking at the data, looking where the numbers are coming from, and then you decide which avenues are best for you. So, for myself, you know, I said earlier today I don't use Twitter um, because, you know, I, I've spent a fair few years doing this type of work, but 
you know, I, I look at the data and different industries and disciplines and go, oh, yeah, well, this is relevant, this isn't relevant, and then you pick based on numbers. Don't just go put all your eggs in one basket and hope it's all going to work. Not one size fits all when it comes to digital marketing. Um, but there is definitely a piece of good information that you could take across all these different platforms to put in your own. Um, email marketing in particular has, depending on the industry, has different open rate percentages. Um, so, you know, just like if you don't get 100% open rate, that's normal. They're usually around the 20. Um, hospitality goes down to about 19. And it's been great, and you have to be organised. So I said earlier today about just printing off a Google Calendar and then just plotting out what activities you're going to do. Don't try to do something every day. If you've never, if you're coming from from zero, like ground zero, and trying to build it up, you know you're just going to burn yourself out, and then it become a chore, and then you don't want to do it. Totally confused in the process. Well, answering mail, Facebook. Well, it's doing one thing and completing it, like just set everything up, isn't it? And going, yeah. Yeah. And going, take the steps, but take them gradually. Yeah, so exactly. Done properly. Yeah, so and it's all about trying to automate as many processes as possible. Email marketing can be automated until a point. Um, so if you want to send out news and deals, then you've got to go in and you know set the time apart. But getting it all set up and operating, so once a month you just got to jump on and go. We are promoting pies or two night accommodation stays this weekend. Make sure you book, blah, 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 and then get it in there. The, the welcome emails will keep triggering if anyone new comes to the website and signs up. If they pay for something on your website, you know, you've already done the legwork, had it all synced up in the background, so you don't have to do anything. It's just about creating that one email once a month or twice a month to get out. Oh, that hour went fast. <laughs> yes. How's your head? Are they pounding? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's, it is. It's a, it is. Because it's, you've got to be in it. Yes, it's what is, works. Yeah. Holy moly, so you've got to have time. Yeah, it's you've got to have skills. You've got to have a degree of skill. Practice yeah. makes perfect, so they reckon. I don't know that I've got that much life left in me to practice. Fiddle. I fiddle. <laughs> and hope I don't do anything wrong. But it is. It's time consuming. My greatest fear is the doing something wrong. Yeah. There is always the doing something. But as always, so you can't yeah, really hurt them. Just give it a go. Oh, like. Can't really know. Oh, the worst thing that can happen is someone gets it and goes, what? Yeah. And they ring you and go, how do I book or how, what's this for? Yeah. It's not like they're going to, you know, any good publicity is good publicity. Um, and, you know, no one's going to, you know, be upset with you for not having a go. The thing I found, though, when you fiddle is you've got to have a book next to you and whatever you touch, you write it down yeah. because... When it works, you can't bloody...